Regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular features. Show. Hello and welcome to Regular Features, the podcast that's exactly the same every single week. It never changes. Ever. And if it does... Tell us to the judge. Uh, my name is Gav Murphy and I'm joined as ever by Mr... Steve Hogarty. All right. And just like every week, what we're going to do is a bit of chat... Um, even though really the heavy lifted in this podcast being done by a ghost. <laughs> yeah, I, if you were if you were to try and count the features in this episode of the regular features podcast, uh, it may read something to the tune of eight nil nil, and it's eight not eight to the readers rather than to Log who is not here. Oh, yeah. For the intro, but we'll be here after the first jingle. Yeah, 100%, because you're the winner here. You're getting the wins. Um, We had to leave the window open in my room because it's so hot. So now and again, you might hear some ambiance from uh, from East London. Some revving motorcycles. But um, can you imagine... Wheelies past your apartment. Can you imagine being just some little kid in, I don't know, Dorset... And just going, oh, I wonder what London's like to live in. <laughs> so, then, hang on. So, hang on. What you're saying is the traffic sounds of podcasts yes. are Not good. Uh, amazing <laughs> to people who in live in Dorset. Dorset. <laughs> <laughs> so from like, I understand, Dorset's like the back of beyond. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're getting goosebumps. Their hairs yeah. are standing on end because they, they hear an ambulance. <laughs> For them, it's like watching an episode of Entourage. (laughs) They're like, holy shit, do those regular feature boys know how to live it up in the big city? Well, I'm really going to try hard on my (laughs) A-levels because I heard a binlery on a podcast I like. And I think that's the life for me. Yeah, basically, we're creating like a little Lena Dunham of Dorset <laughs> is sitting there going, I'm going to go to London and I'm going to write a blog and then probably turn out to be a bit of an arsehole as it goes, just because <laughs> they've heard a motorbike going past my house. A single motorbike. <laughs> well, I'm amazed and privileged to be yeah. able to uh, play and perform this role yeah. in the lives of our listeners. But the listeners should be privileged to have played a role in our lives because, as we mentioned, this is a special episode in which every feature Mm -hmm. has been suggested by the readers. Holy shit. And performed mostly by a man who is not here now because he's had to go catch his train. Yeah. But we perform these bits out of order. We do the intro at the end uh, just to, you know, keep the energy little, up. A little peek behind the curtain for you yeah. there. Sorry. Uh, when no you other. finally make the move from Dorset, Lena. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's called editing. Get it's, used to it's it. It's called It's Hollywood. the way we do it. It's called Hollywood. So <laughs> should we have happens. a jingle? Then we're going to go in and then like suddenly a new man's going to appear. Unintroduced. His name is Log. He's done all the hard work <laughs> this week. Please enjoy. <laughs> So, Log, I saw that you put out the call on Twitter.com today. Sometimes you ain't got no ideas, and sometimes you realise that you do have access to literally hundreds of people, some of whom might have an idea. Yeah, so I just tweeted, getting on the train, has anyone got any ideas? (laughs) And I was thrilled at what I received. The thing is, I usually, usually, not in this scenario at all, I bear no ill will towards this at all, because I know this is going to be fantastic, but I always hate it when I see journalists go, I'm about to speak to Steven Spielberg. Got any questions for him? It's like, if you haven't got any fucking questions for Steven Spielberg, I'm going to speak to him. That's ridiculous. Like, yeah. I hate it. Fucking does my nut in. It's yeah, fun. I mean, that's it. It's for a thing, that thing that journalists do. Oh, yeah. says, Can anyone think of any 1980s sitcoms starring Penelope Fielding? It's for a it's thing. It's for a thing. It's like, <laughs> Just, yeah, that thing is work. Yeah, <laughs> that's a job to know these things. 
like, it's up there with, uh, and I, I fucking despise this, when you just go, you can put in your own joke there. It's like, no, you're the writer. I'm reading your feature. You put your jokes in. I'm not yeah. doing your fucking work for yeah. you. Yeah, but you're among friends. And my <laughs> God, that, that one thing that's just out of your reach that could make it perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have every sympathy because I've, I've gone um, to Stuart a few times then. Like, well, today for this feature, I was messaging Stuart, what's that song that goes, ooh, yeah, this is wonderful. Like, Stuart was like, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and I was like... You're upset. And me. I was like, is it on the bass? Stuart, 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 is it on the bass? <laughs> He's like, I want to go back to London. <laughs> where I like wasn't as that. readily available to your requests. <laughs> Yeah, so I think basically I don't blame people for using the world to how out. Cause like, well, I don't blame you because I know this is going to be great. No, and like you are using Twitter as a resource yeah. in order to trigger your own creativity in the field of features. I hope that what I have got for you today is a number of features. I certainly have got that. <laughs> Whether they're features or not, it's not up to you. They are features. <laughs> Whether they're good or not. It's not up to you either. They're objectively good. You might not like them. That just makes you <laughs> someone who maybe should listen to a different podcast. <laughs> Are you talking to us or them? <laughs> not willing to really say at this point. <laughs> so, That's, yeah. What was the first suggestion? Well, the first suggestion I got was um, from Rich Pigo on Twitter. That's at Rich Pigo. Is he Rich Pig or is his name... Rich, Rich Richard. It's someone reacting to Pig a Rich Pig by going, Rich Pig, oh! <laughs> <laughs> who's, so. the, who's that guy? <laughs> and his his suggestion simply was, because I messaged that I was getting onto a train, ticket inspector flirting masterclass? Question mark. So um, for this one, I'm going to need your help, Steve. Okay. So for this one, I, I have blagged a couple of extra up first class upgrades because sometimes I buy the normal ticket and sit in first class and see if I can distract them by going, oh, I just dropped my ticket. Oh, there it is. Never mind. And I've got away with a free upgrade just sure. by doing like distracty stuff. Does that <laughs> work? You really? I've done it three times in five years. So it's a really, really low hit rate, but it has worked a few times. Wow. That's about as many shows as Darren Brown does. And it, it works out as much for him as it does for you. Yeah, that's the thing. We only see the ones of Darren Brown where it actually goes right. There's a fuckload when it goes wrong. Yeah. And he just gets the shit kicked out of him. Does he? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I like I like knowing that. There are no magicians. We had that he had that show where he pretended that playing an arcade game turned you into a zombie. Oh, yeah. He thought Fuck zombies that. were real. And it's like, oh, everyone just forgets about that one. Yeah. They all remember. The time he uh, did played, a lottery, did twelve chess masters at the same time. Yeah, but that that thing is copied from a nineteen seventies TV movie that I saw, and I was like, th- when he saw that, I instantly knew what he was doing because that shit is copied. Mm. Fuck you, Darren Brown, for copying old TV movies. Well, the lottery one was. The trick was in a Jonathan Creek episode I watched last night. The lottery what? one was a camera trick, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? It's bollocks. Yeah, that was, and Darren Brown, always, we're getting way off track here, I'm sorry. I mean, no, he could trick me into bed just by, simply by virtue of being a man with a beard. But that's not magic, that's me being a horny toad. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't cast a spell. <laughs> just so you know, you say, as you're unbuttoning your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this is more about me than it is you, Darren. I could stop this at any time, Darren. I just don't want to. I just don't want to. I want to see it. I want to see it. <laughs> okay. So, Peter's suggestion yeah. was... Ticket Inspector Flirting Masterclass. Excellent. And here we go. The first time mm. I ever got a first-class ticket upgrade for free. Tickets, please. Certainly. Uh, uh, just let me... <sighs> Sir? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I was I was distracted by the outline of a dick just below your belt line. Yeah, baby. That's where I keep it. Ooh, can I give it a biscuit? It looks hungry. Oh, no. I don't want it getting all chubby. Oh, oh can I get a little... Can I give it a little drink of water, then? I'm very sorry. I... Can't get it all wet and make it drip everywhere. Well, is there any way you could... Sorry. Well, 
Is there any way you'd let me treat your penis like a dog that won't cause you to refuse my offer and then go on immediately to describe your dick in increasingly erotic ways? Well, you could slip this cock ring on him and walk him up and down the carriage while he woofs out spunk. Perfect. And I won't be paying the upgrade. Um, that would work. No, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. It did. <laughs> Cockering like a lead. I didn't specify that in the script. I was writing in a hurry. Cockering mm. is like a collar. But I do want to use the phrase woofs out spunk on a t-shirt <laughs> with an arrow down to my dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, I thought, woofs out spunk on a t-shirt. <laughs> on a t-shirt. <laughs> Pointing to your t-shirt. <laughs> it's like, I'm the stupid. <laughs> That's great. What a great suggestion. Who, who Thank you very much, Rick, Rich, Rich Pigo, for that suggestion. Plenty more where that came from. We've got a few more of them to, go, <laughs> to, to plow through. <laughs> what else What else did you get? These well, are good. Well, the next one um, mm. was from Glacier Reese, who, that is the Twitter handle of a man called Matt King, and he suggested, what if Stranger Things, but big boys in the 90s? Nice. And I saw that, I thought, well, I could rub that one out quickly, but I want to steal that for a future full form feature. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you very too much. Good. Okay, too good for a one off, man. That is putting the big boys in a wider universe where mm. they would. <laughs> they're just small children who've been through a very, very harrowing experience. And now they're big lads who dance to suede <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> So yeah, you're not having that, Matt King, but you will get it. I love Log's Big Boys yeah. universe now. I feel like there should be a Big Boypedia. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need together. one. Characters within the Big Boy universe. Yes. And yeah, that's different timelines. If you've got a lot of time on your hands, why don't you write that for us? We'll love it. There is a regular features of Wikipedia. Is it? There is. Is there? Is that good? Is that a good idea? Uh, yes, it was. The person who made it was very generous with their time to do it. Right, good. Uh, I don't know. Does it say anything <laughs> I don't know about, where it is. Does it say anything I, naughty on it? I just think you can t- type regular features Wikipedia into the internet. Right. You won't find a Wikipedia page for us because we're not notable. But you will find the regular features Pedia. <laughs> Rat. The next one, I will say, is from the Joe Robson, who is goes by the name of Joe Robson. And whoever got Joe Robson at Joe Robson first, mm. he's... Trying to pull one over him by calling himself at the Joe Robson. So oh. I think I think the Joe Robson. The real uh, Joe Robson. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'm going to go with it. He listens to this podcast, so I'm going to go with him as the real Joe Robson. What if the other one listens to the podcast, but he just didn't get to Twitter in time to give you a feature idea? <sighs> you snooze, you shit. <laughs> as the saying goes. Joe Robson says, I live in Japan and own a copy of the book TV Go Home. And I'm therefore possibly the only person to have a physical photograph of your face in the entire glorious nation of Nippon. How can I use this to my advantage? That's almost like a backhanded dig at you. What? He reckons nobody else would have bought that, your book in the whole of Nippon. It, yeah. I well, that image don't think I didn't to, notice that, the Joe. I'm kind of willing to give him that. Okay. But even though I've got a friend... One of my closest friends from university days lives in the one that's an anagram of Tokyo, but isn't Kyoto. Kyoto. Thank you. <laughs> Nippon. <That's horrible>. Nippon. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm sure he's got some photos of me around his flat somewhere. There's a big contingency <laughs> of expat Brit games developers over there. And from what I've heard, they routinely uh, group masturbate onto a photograph of you I'm- once a week. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> so he has the only non-spunk-stained version of you. How can he capitalise on the single unspoiled... You never know what he's been doing, man. I wouldn't be able to look at my face when I was that age <laughs> and not crack one off. <laughs> I'd love to see this photo. Maybe we can get hold of it so it can be the album art for this uh, well, thing. Well, mate, the first, my first suggestion of what he could do with it is um, describes it to you. Because I, mean, I know for a fact that in that photo... My face in the TV Go Home book is staring at a TV screen with just the word cunt written on it. 
Hey, it fucking works, mate. Eh? I just laughed. It was it was the old uh, it was based on an old thing called the Pleb Dazzle Party, where a, a group of idiots, yeah, the public, yeah, just roar and laugh at stupid shit because Charlie Brooker hates people and thinks that they should they're just shit. It worked for me. <laughs> so basically, he could use the book to teach Japanese children the word cunt. That's that's number one. They'll pay you for that. When I went on French exchanges, I would have given anyone a, a, a Florence or whatever they use over there. <laughs> <laughs> One of those coins with a hole in it. Yeah, yeah. To teach me a, to the get into French the subway. Word. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just yeah. Can you teach me your worst word? Fr- France, incidentally, does not have the word cunt. Nothing as bad as it. No. no. The best I got off my French exchange was va te faire sucer, which means go and suck yourself. Which is not like, that bad. That's, yeah, I wish, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I was in, yeah. Just, just bam, mon frère. <laughs> and that's why I'm not allowed in France. <laughs> and the second suggestion, what what you can do with my face is, um, because I mean, Jap- Japanese people don't have any idea about other cultures. It's all just Evangelion or read or die. You could just tell them that I'm an English leprechaun, and if they give you a thousand yen, you can touch my face. And get the look of the English. And then when anything happens to them, good or bad, just say to them, yep, that's the look of the English, all right. That's a thousand yen well spent. Number three. (laughs) As my face currently isn't being used commercially in Japan, you could claim my face like one would claim a business on Google Maps. Simply click claim this face, and within a week you'll receive a code in the post that you can use on Google's website to claim and enter information about my face. What are the openings out? What are the opening hours of my mouth, for example? And if anyone reviews my face, you can reply with, I'm sorry my face didn't live up to the standards of quality and service we strive to maintain here at Log's Face. Next time you see me, feel free to pinch my nose and poke me in the eyes. (laughs) That's writing quickly on the train. (laughs) I love those. Those are all good suggestions. So far, we have a high quality of readers. They are not shit. (laughs) Also, that's really nice that, even though I slagged him off just a little bit just now for giving you a backhanded compliment, um, that is really nice that he moved his life, presumably, out to Japan. Yeah. And out of all the things that he owns, he was like, oh, I better take that with me. That book. Yeah, I didn't even keep my own copy of it, and I had to buy it again when it was reissued. Did you? (laughs) The original ones are selling for like sold for like hundred quid for a while. Shut up. Yeah, Charlie Brooker was an icon for a bit, but the book was out of print. Then they reprinted it. Now I don't think you'd get hundred quid anymore. (laughs) This one's from Mitsurugi Killer. Mitsurugi Killer. Thank you. I just read it again. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And um, whose name is just Mitsu. In her main handle. Mm. And her, I'm assuming it's a girl for some reason. Go with it. I think you should do. Yeah. Yeah. Roll of the dice. Yeah. Why, why assume blokes all the time? Thanks. <laughs> her suggestion <laughs> is review a car as someone who doesn't know what a wheel is. So I'm going to put on my car reviewing voice and say, I'm sat here in the cockpit of a brand new Mazda Citroen 4 Twin Turbo with a lovely brown chassis and a big old metal pipe hanging out the back. The pedal choice in the new model is phenomenal. No. With not one, not two, but three foot handles to choose from. One goes fast, my favourite, and one goes slower. Thanks, Grandad. And the third is a kind of context-sensitive pedal that will do whatever strategically useful, strategically useful at the time. Think of that pedal as a kind of right click on the road ahead as you cruise in comfort to your destination. Well, I've arrived at a nice motel, where I hope to test the vending machines with a number of foreign coins that I've read have a similar heft to some of the more valuable coins in this country. Wait a minute. What the fuck are they? I'm sorry, there appear to be four rubber-shielded parasites chewing on my axles. I'm going to try and kick them off before they do some real damage. Oh, fuck! Oh no! My ankle's trapped in the wheel arch! I mean, why do they even fucking call it a wheel arch? It's nowhere near the steering wheel. And come to that, why do they call it a steering wheel? This is ridiculous! And that ends with the car driving off with me getting dragged down the street. 
Yeah. Going, this is ridiculous. I don't deserve I'm just reviewing them. I'm just reviewing. Oh, fuck, I've gone anti-Semitic, sorry. I could have, <laughs> before the anti-Semitism, I could have listened to half hour of that. Mm. I thought that was very good. You did a very good... Uh, this is fast features. Mm. And if you love them, you're going to be sorry. And if you hate them, they'll be over soon. <laughs> That's fair enough, actually. And also, what I will point out to any uh, readers who are getting their features uh, read out, if, like, before you start getting too big for your boots and thinking, oh, yeah, that's me then, I could do it. None of these so far would be a full feature, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you literally just said it could be a full feature, guys. Except that one. You Why didn't you? let me finish, <laughs> even though I did a big gap before saying after saying my sentence. So except that one, and except the one where Log wouldn't read it out because it's good enough for a full feature. Besides ah, that. But I don't know, you right, because I haven't heard that one yet. So. I'm not doing that feature to you, Gav, because you'll make a point of hating it. <laughs> Next, wonderful features. The next one is from at Joe the Doe, who goes by the made-up name, I'm sure, of Keanu Beeves. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a joke about bees? Beavers? Beavers. Maybe. Vaginas. Joe the Doe is a perfectly nice name. uh, Joe the Doe, he's one of my original followers on Twitter, like, from a long time ago, and I actually love him. He's like, do you know when... I follow him, I think. Yeah. Who's that guy on Twitter Not who went again. off Come to on, do... Come on, mate. You've got to get off this. He, he, made a, he made a sitcom called Catastrophe or something like Catastrophe. What? Um, Rob, Rob Delaney. Delaney. Rob Delaney. Oh. I remember following him just because he was a hot torso on Twitter. He's ridiculously hot. He's yeah. amazing. He was, his head wasn't even in there. And I followed him thinking, well, you're a torso and you do jokes. I love that. What's that about? Joe the Doe was similar. He's my, Rob Delaney is, he is my, uh, you know, in a, in a relationship you have one one free get out of jail free card mm. yeah. fucking someone else. Uh, or celebrity who ever propositions you. Rob Delaney is mine. But it's, yeah, I mean, if anyone propositions me, I'm going to fuck him. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the one we like to say is... at dinner parties. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you're yeah, really right. you cheat, be like, uh, Steve, why do you smell like another man's peer? I ran into Rob Delaney at the bar. I ran into Rob Delaney. Um, it's like, I thought he was straight. Well, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you have that veneer of respectability about your potentials. Whereas I'm just like, no, I'm going to do it. I'm dead hungry. <laughs> dead hungry. <laughs> Give me space. <laughs> You're suffocating me, you say, <laughs> as you jerk off three men at once. <laughs> I need this. <laughs> um, okay, what's the next one? Um, so Joe the Joe Doe's Doe. suggestion was simply the phrase, my ass is so hairy, I can't shit. <laughs> He's and, had to um, tweet that as well, which is good. He what? He's had to tweet that as well, which is good. It was Nat, so it's only to a mutuals. Uh, you should retweet Until, it. Uh, you never know what Twitter does these days, though. It could have fucking sent it directly to whoever he works with. Yeah, I have no <laughs> idea, yeah. So, yeah, so instead of just writing a, a rewrite of the Derek and Clive song, I Love You So Much, I Can't Shit, which, Google it, it's a great song. <laughs> Maybe play it at the end. It's probably out of copyright, isn't it? One of them's dead. Both of them are dead. So, um, so what That's I did definitely is... definitely how that works. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what I... Um, Wrote instead was the Beaufort scale of your ass being so hairy you can't shit. Fantastic. So get ready for a 12 point list. Yes. One. Hairy ass scale one. No hair. Oh, you can shit nice and no shit sticks to your cheeks unless you maybe decide to press your lovely tarks together for some reason to prank your own may to prank your own ass maybe. You do you. Stage two. A new downy growth requires a monthly flannel wipe. Rinse the flannel monthly, and if you know anyone with a dishwasher, nip around their house and toss it in for an annual boil wash. The accent come from. Yes, <laughs> that's the yeah, I'm that. trying to give you information. I don't know what I'm doing. I like it. I love it. I loved it. This is my information voice. Okay. Number three. <clears throat> a nice buzz cut sees your bum bum in military shit shape. Report him for duty. Crapton. Lots of <laughs> <laughs> reporting for duty Crapton. <laughs> Number four. At this stage, 
Your stubbly growth can apply stylish Artex style grooves to the outside of your stool. This might give you some ideas for your living room ceiling, but think twice. Artex is hard to get rid of and may lower the resale value of your house. Number five. It's real knowledge <laughs> creeping in. That's, that's, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah, that's an estate agent told him and that. every joke can't be about shit, as much as I love shit <laughs> jokes. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't do arse text, but that's good for you. You're growing there's, there's as a There's going as a to be man. more of them, okay, so right. not to lay it on too thick like, a, like, like Marmite. Number five. This is the normal amount of hair. Everyone has this. All their amounts of hair are hypothetical. Number six. Your arse now requires combing. With daily attention, you can style your arse hair into a kind of bummy runway, along which bum browns will intuitively flow. Congratulations on building Shatwick, your first hair port. <laughs> Women with hairy fannies can have a queef row, if they like. But, it, <laughs> but it's important to remember that women do not shit out of their fannies. Number seven. Generous amounts of hair guide the turd efficiently to its destination, like a squid releasing its eggs into a hot geezer. Get a B-Day now, or you risk a buildup of lubricating mucus that will eventually cause the plop to rest just shy of the pool in a hairy hammock, requiring a manual release with a lollipop stick. <laughs> Number eight. Your hair is now long enough to reach the water in the toilet bowl. Watch out for turds establishing a shuttle route, with your asshole as simply one station in an endless back and forth. Maybe stand up. Or shit in the shower. Number nine. Some of the hairs have begun to form a network of natural dreadlocks, making the turds pass the bowl much like a child piloting a spaceship through a treacherous valley of sandworms. Sure, the kid's a natural, but he's just a kid, goddammit! <laughs> Number ten. Thick cables of knotted ass ropes braid themselves into an impenetrable nappy. You will need to sit in a bucket of caustic soda to dissolve the waste matter over several hours before taking your ass mop to an outside drain and running it through a mangle. Number 11. Just logs, you, you're really on a run of mangle references. Like <laughs> I said scullery last week too. <laughs> There's always a scullery in the mangle. <laughs> um, number 11. One gigantic hair loop endlessly in an... Well, say that again. One gigantic hair loops endlessly in and out of your butthole, lacing it forever shut. You can no longer breathe through your anus and will suffocate in two minutes. There is nothing you can do. Number 12. The whole world is overgrown with your hair now, and a plucky groove... <laughs> And a plucky group of smooth-arsed kung fu monks must fight across a desolate city to retrieve the artifact that can rebuild civilization. Basically, at the moment, I can't remember the plot of Enslaved Odyssey, Odyssey to the West, <laughs> but you just have to imagine that game, but with a load of really matted shit hair everywhere, up the buildings instead of plants. And at the end of the game, you instead of whatever happened, there's an extreme close-up to the lead character's arsehole, and it reveals a downy growth on his ass, Fade to black, as he says, Has anyone got a flannel? I think I need to wipe. <laughs> it's a loop! It's a forbidden loop! <laughs> It'll happen again! <laughs> Very good. I like that one. <sighs> that Who's that from? Joe that, the Doe. Joe the Doe. Thank you, Joe the Doe. All oh. thanks go to him oh. for the quality of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a slap in the face, Steve. <laughs> I, also, <laughs> I also like the reference to Enslaved Odysseys of the West, a game that was great. It was really good. And made no cultural impact whatsoever. No. No one ever talks about that game yeah. anymore. Except Andy Circus. Andy Circus. But it's one of those games where I of all the games that there was a whole period where city games went into cities like Crisis did it. With cities, but with grass on them. Yeah, yeah. And like they only that, had a grass on them, so you couldn't go inside them. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So you, they didn't have to do all the reflections and the glass and stuff. Exactly. Like that. well, they That's don't have the to do hardest bit because there's a piranha plant on it. Oh, yeah. Fuck, man. It's, like, oh, it's got piranhas on it. Yeah. But piranha plants. Yes. <laughs> it's very different. Yeah. Or just yeah. Or it's just really mucky. Like 
Oh, is this one set in uh, post-apocalypse? Because we can't do mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> All the mirrors All have been splashed. They've got splashed with mud. <laughs> oh, so, so how could every mirror in the world be splashed with mud? Oh, it's post-apocalypse. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's meant to be set in the 90s, but uh, no. Set in 2022 now. Nuclear problems. Yeah, ah, there's okay. nuclear fallout on the... On the yeah. I can't wait for the first video game to recreate the classic movie thing where there's the final standoff in a hall of mirrors. <laughs> it's going to happen one day. Oh, yeah. It must have happened in Max Payne. I'm pretty sure it happened in Max Payne. <laughs> Him diving through different mirrors. I'm going to... There's like a, a virtual reality standoff in a hall of mirrors that you could definitely create. That would make everyone And it would sick. just... Everyone would, get, oh my God, everyone yeah. would either just throw up straight away... Or just run somehow 30 miles per hour into the nearest wall <laughs> at speeds faster than humans are supposed to be capable of. But when your brain is untethered from reality and your body's reacting with athleticism it never knew it could manifest and you break your neck on a sideboard <laughs> alone in a room that's gone dark because it... The sun went down since you started playing the game and the lights aren't on. <laughs> this, this, again, came all too easily to you. I think you've lived this. <laughs> That's the part of the Lord Mower Man. <laughs> <laughs> and days later, your still twitching corpse is found. Headset cracked, but still on your face. But then... Piers Brosnan gives you a kick. Back to work, Job. That was just a training mission. Now it's time to do it for real. There's lawns to mow. Lawns to mow. <laughs> Thought I was lost in a hairy pass. Soon turned out it was Gavin's ass. Did it soon. Da 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 Regular features. How are you guys enjoying the whiskies? Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Uh, yeah. As an Irishman, <laughs> the plural of whiskey yeah. is whiskey. <laughs> yeah. And they give the whiskey to with. I mean, uh, for my kids. <laughs> More than one whiskey. Mm. I work with an Irishman, and he is furious when everyone asks for a Jameson's, because it is called Jameson. And oh. I said, well, if, if that's for two Jameson's, is that okay? Jameson's. And he just went, no. No. Like It's pronounced there's some, Joctopus. There's, yeah, there's Joctopus. <laughs> and you have to sing it. <laughs> Joctopus. <laughs> no, so no, yeah, there's some dogma about that. Um, Plurals. I've always been told that it's Jemisons. Jemisons, yeah. That's how, yeah. That's how the uh, the Irish say it. Yeah. Jemisons. In Ireland, we say Jemison. Yeah. Jesus. It's how you would say, uh, if someone was called James, what would you call them? Jemis. <laughs> <laughs> and what if he was on one on Jemisons? What would you say then? <laughs> <laughs> Jemison or Jemison. On what? <laughs> Huh. Yeah, no, the, the the whiskey. Uh, I would say, I in my head, I, I would say Jemison's. I'd add the S on the end. I can't get around the fact that the fact you're not saying Jameson because it's uh, Jameson's whiskey. Yeah, he but the whiskey belongs to Jameson. So Jemison's would be. I have a bottle Fuck of Jemison's. Yeah. Jack Daniels. Yeah, his name isn't Daniels. His name is Jack Daniel. Or oh, Blanton's. Fuck, you're not wrong. Blanton's, we've got one right here. There we go. Lafroyag's. But what is it? <laughs> <laughs> La Perhoregs. Blanton's is just the same, yeah. It's exactly the same. Uh, his name may be Jack Daniels. No, I think his name is Jack Daniels. Is it just Jack Daniel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Jack Daniels is the name of the whiskey. Because yeah, it's Jack, Jack Daniels, Daniels whiskey. Scottish. Yeah. You've got to bring all this Scottish, back to Tennessee. your Irish bartender log. Yeah. Bring him up to date. Really slam him. It's, it's for a start, uh, it's, not, right. it's not Jameson's or Jameson. It's... Jemison's, and there's an apostrophe before the S. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm not going to take this back to him because I don't know. Because he's fit. How, he's fit. Because he? he sacked him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it got really out of hand last week. 
face when I was talking about plurals. I, <laughs> I like put his face through the fucking wall. <laughs> Gav, why do you have so many whiskeys in your house and you're offering them to us? I don't know. Well, it's because... You don't know. People started buying <laughs> them for you me. you got pissed on whiskey. No, people started buying them for me. Um, and then I just realised I don't drink whiskey at any... Uh, people are buying me whiskeys at a rate that is more than I'm drinking them. That's a really good thing to be known to buy gifts for. Because yeah, I well... Know, people have um, things that, like, uh, I, I met a friend uh, who... She had a bunch of flamingo stuff. Right. Flamingo stuff. Yeah, so like yeah. she had like four flamingo things. And yeah. it's like, huh, oh, check out my flamingo thing. And now, uh, birthdays, Christmas, people flamingos. go, Flam- get her some flamingo stuff. Yeah. She fucking loves fl- flamingo Does stuff. Does she still like it though? No, she liked flamingos for like two weeks when she was like, had a bunch of flamingo shit. <laughs> and now her house is full of flamingo things. Yeah. Because it's that she's the flamingo girl. I feel like I'm a little bit like that with my mum and the Simpsons. Like, because obviously as a child, and, and still now to be fair, like I absolutely love the Simpsons. But obviously as a kid, I longed for every bit of Simpsons merchandise that there was. But oh, man. When, also when I was a child, um, there wasn't that many things, really, was it? Like, yeah. action figures, t-shirts, that's about it. I remember going to university with the Definitive Guide to the Simpsons series 1 to 8 mm. and just reading mm. it religiously and then thinking maybe I need a new element to my personality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sort of sit in there watching my VHSs that I recorded off of Sky. Yeah. So Amazing. When you, dis- you discovered Garfield after that. I will. I do have to say that Garfield was pre-Simpsons by a good ten years. <laughs> so Simpsons was you expanding your brain. <laughs> the phase where I His thought love I, of would animation. Be, I could I could be the one person who archived the entire Garfield back catalogue in my print stick scrapbooks. Um, but so my my mum buys me loads of Simpsons stuff now. Like for Christmas, I got and it's not the first time she's bought me this either. A bottle opener. Which is like this is hideous. It's like this massive red plastic bottle opener with a like a sticker of Homer on it. And every time you open up a bottle, it does the Homer Simpson burp. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's, that's, that's fucking you amazing. It's not. Um, <laughs> but she just buys me stuff like this. She just buys me Simpson stuff all the time. But what happened was, we bought a. Uh, I got given a couple of like two bottles of whiskey for free at a work thing, and uh, Clara bought a whiskey sort of. Uh, table thing like sort of drinks cabinet and I thought oh those two bottles of free whiskey that I got I'll stick those on top of there and I did that and then people started coming around and being like oh this man who likes his whiskey he brought an entire cabinet just to keep it all yeah um so people <laughs> just started buying me bottles of whiskey, whiskey which is really nice life hack you abs- absolute life hack but also I feel like a fraud because I can't drink this much whiskey you need to get a little I don't know, like, what do you schedule. like drinking? Whiskey schedule. No, I love it. I, I, like, do you I like drinking whiskey? I do, generally like whis- drinking. Like, I didn't used, to, used to, I didn't used to be able to drink it at all. So you're I not being ungrateful, you're just Absolutely struggling not, no. to keep up with the I love. I can't get through it, Log. can't get through it. I can't drink that much whiskey. Like, I like having, like, two little bits. Bits of whiskey. Oh, that's, <laughs> bits. You guys wouldn't know this. I'm in, big into whiskey, so that's what we call it. Whiskey. A bit of whiskey. A bit of whiskey. Yeah. You want one bit or two bits? Two bits. Two bits of whiskey. Uh, I, love, I love two bits of whiskey now and again. Like, that's enough for me. Uh, maybe like two bits of whiskey twice a week. Mm. Uh, keeps the doctor at bay. That certainly um, sounds like with it's in the, within the government guidelines of whiskey consumption, so that won't yeah. affect your like insurance. Exactly, price. yeah. But yeah, that's what, that's what I thought when you guys come around and start out offering the whiskey out. Get that done. I've even fucking decanted some of it into like little crystal decanters. So Get it looks like fuck. so it looks wow. like I'm getting through it more. All right, just, check out Mad Men over just here. Just to make myself <laughs> feel a little bit better. <laughs> Goblets and decanters. Yeah. My favourite role playing game. <laughs> this is how it feels to be lonely. This is how it feels to be small. This is how it feels when your feature sucks fucking balls. This next feature, suggestion. Came from game writing. It might be games writing. Mm, I copy think it, it is, yeah. If it's games writing. So I, I copied it down wrong, James. Mm-hmm. But I still knew it in my head because I see your name. You tweet too much, James. <laughs> Why is he called... Is he is he a video games writer? Or does he just like doing tweets about video games? Are you asking me to know more about this man's life? I know that he writes... <laughs> you didn't even know his fucking Twitter handle. <laughs> like. No, I knew it. I just didn't write type it right. 
<laughs> well, his Twitter handle suggests he wrote one game and then stopped. Yeah. <laughs> That's all the history I, we have on him. I knew, I know that I like him, otherwise I would have unfollowed him. So that James means he's Parker. Fit, then. I don't remember seeing his face. Just, it, well, his, just his torso. Yeah, you yeah, yeah he, bastard. He's the Rob Delaney of video games. <laughs> <laughs> no, James Parker, you're lovely, and that. I don't know. Take that how you like it, because we're going to read your, the script that you inspired now, because what you said was this. That time when there was a fight on the set of Casualty, and no one could tell who was actually injured and who was in makeup. That's fantastic. It's a fucking good idea. The man's got things going on in his head, and I want us all to read the script that I wrote in response to that. Did you know Casualty's all filmed in Wales now? That's right. Couldn't care less. Whoa. I... Like, <laughs> I liked what? learning that. Thank you, Gav. Yeah. Um, I think the... I can't wait for there to be a whole story around Eddie Anto's shrine. <laughs> <Cardiff> <laughs> Bay. <laughs> it's like we gotta do something else with it. Like, <laughs> even though I don't really know what that is, every time that I go past it, I do get really upset. <laughs> <laughs> he went from being the T boy to a a weird angry queer icon and I loved him for that. Is it? Yeah. Wait. The real T boy in the real like making tea for Russell T Davis. No, he went. Well, I believe that that's what the T stands first, for. In the first series, <laughs> <laughs> Russell T boy Ianto. <laughs> now uh, he in the first season of Torchwood, he was just like this non character that just started crying a lot. Right, and then towards the end, he became a little bit more fierce nice. and a little bit more heroic. And I died. think he sucked. Barrowman's doodles. Who's Torchwood in Torchwood? Or is Torchwood the name Barrowman. of... Barrowman. Barrowman Tor- is Torchwood. Torchwood. He is Torchwood. Torchwood is the anime of Doctor Who that went on to become a spin-off. What's... Is Torchwood a, an organisation? What is he? Yes, Torchwood was set up, I think, after the first invasion of the oh, Cybermen and the Jack, Daleks? Doctor Jack. Is he, he's Jack... Jack, ha- Jack, Jack Captain Jack Hartmus. Right, so he's not Torchwood then. He's not Torchwood. He's not no, Johnny he's the Torchwood. Leader of the, he's the leader of the that era of Torchwood. Oh, so it's like kind of division. It's like, so it's like Doctor, Shield. Doctor Who's not Doctor Who. Right. Yeah. He's Doctor Bloob. Poop. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of um, uh, Ianto's shrine, that mm. makes you inexplicably uh, emotional. I saw a great tweet from one of um, Dan Douglas's. Listen to the podcast. Doesn't listen to the podcast. I follow him on Twitter. I think everyone who follows me on Twitter listens listen to, the to the podcast. podcast. Uh, <clears throat> something that makes them inexplicably emotional is the uh, the color testing of the printer, which has a a picture of a bird mm. with all of its colors out of phase, like the pink in the top left corner and the yellow in the top right corner and the magenta in the bottom. Yeah, and then a big arrow pointing <laughs> towards the color. The, the bird, but all of its colours are aligned and it looks beautiful. Oh. And like, I saw it, I had an, re- an immediate emotional reaction to it as well. So I can't, like, he, he did it. <laughs> he became, a bitch, he, he became it. the fucking bird. Kudos. Oh. Yeah. And if I was ever Kudos to get a tattoo, I think yeah. it would be the t- tattoo of a bird whose ink cartridges are out of sync on the left hand side. And then yeah. like, in sync on the right hand side. So you get it on one arm, you'd get it fucked. On the other arm, you'd get it normal. Oh no, I think out of sync in different ways on each arm and leg, and then in sync on your back. So you can actually hold your arms up and legs down like you're being crucified. <laughs> and only then will the bird feel Finally. justice. <laughs> ascend, <laughs> ascend to heaven. Yeah. Uh, what is this feature log? Yeah. <laughs> Torchwood, I think. I can't imagine. It's. Basically, to recap, it's the time there was a fight on the set of Casualty and no one could tell who was actually injured and who was in makeup. I love it. And I, and this is what I came up with in the ten minutes of the thing I afforded myself with. Love it. Help! Help! Acting. Hey, help. <laughs> Casualty! A runaway Ferris wheel has ripped off all the arms of everyone on it! Bring everyone in. Have you got all their arms? No, I'm going to do that more Welsh because Casualty is set and takes place in Wales. Which we've learned. 
Bring everyone in. Have you got all their arms? Yes, they're on the back of this big truck. Great. Of ice. Oh, great. Back, t- <laughs> back the truck up. T- I forgot how to do my voice. Back the truck up to the back door and tip it in the sorting room. Watch out, everyone. I'm flying a big plane full of legs into this hospital set. Set? Oh, breaking the fourth wall a bit there, mate. <laughs> Explosion sound. Oh no, the plane that guy was driving just knocked off both my arms and now they've flown into that enormous pile of prop arms that are in the hospital limb sorting room. What the fuck is going on? This wasn't in the script. Script? I'm carrying 20 top grade sexy big legs to the Olympics as there's been an accident on Grinder, and they've all gayed each other's thighs off. Quickly! There are two very big squirts of blood coming out of my shoulder holes. Normally, I'd point at the squirts to alert you to them, but I can't do that right now. It it should be self-evident from the blood. How am I supposed to tell the difference between arms and legs? I'm not a real doctor. Just fucking put a couple of legs on the enemy arms. That'd be good. I think they just snap on, and frankly, legs are bigger than arms, and I want them closer to my face. And then there might be some balls between below my chin after. I don't know how this works. <laughs> I just like big legs and I want them closer to my face and that's all I've got. And that the last 20 seconds was improvised. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. It's good. Good premise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good premise. Of where I went from there, <laughs> I shall leave that. Who <laughs> <No laughs> bloody knows? <laughs> oh fucking hell! I love it when there's ever. <laughs> it's good. I like this. I like it. It's a good. It's a good vibe. It's a good vibe it's a, to the podcast. It's a whole new episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can't say further than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking listening to it, aren't you? We we'll get well. Yeah. We're getting through the whiskey. You've if made nothing it this, else. You've made it this far. You can't not be enjoying it or deciding to unsubscribe from the fucking feed. Well, hopefully not. Sometimes I listen to the ends of episodes just because they're marked as unread on my podcast feed, and I feel a sense of completion when I persevere with them, <laughs> despite not liking what's happening. What, in our episodes, in our own episodes? No, in other people's podcasts. Oh, right, yeah. Never yeah. in this one. I just delete them. I just delete them. We'll, we'll... No, because I need to manually delete them. Yeah, it's fun. It makes me feel clean. Yeah, I'd just rather listen to like the last like few picking hours. your ass. <laughs> it's like picking a bit out of your ass. You're like, you oh, got... yeah, that's oh, good. I... Oh, Have you never got God, to the stage no. where you're listening to like three or four different like outros where they're just plugging their shit? Yeah. And you're just listening to plugs. You've constantly. already got a Simba mattress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of very therapeutic. Do you? It does my nut in. Good. Let's continue. Yeah. Simba mattresses do your nut in. <laughs> You've got to you send it back. Point, then you're say not going to like this next feature. <laughs> For manscaping. And the last one, the last, very last feature that I managed to write on the very, very short journey here tonight. Mm-hmm. Scruffy Looking, and at underscore Scruffy Looking, whose name is George Barger, asked, he posted a picture of a notification on his phone in which he said, um, well, the notification said, looking for some vibes? Why not download the latest episode of Regular Features? And that's the kind of thing that SoundCloud says about us. No, it doesn't, does we, it? We are registered as a spoken word podcast on SoundCloud, but it will send people notifications saying we are a vibe that they might want to check out. Looking for some vibes. vibes. We, we we could be a funeral a funeral podcast. Yeah, that's really yeah. disrespectful. Actually. We could be a bit like a, a podcast about trauma. Looking for some vibes. It's like looking for some yeah. vibes. The funeral cast uploaded an episode about what happens if your friend dies in a car crash. <laughs> Yeah, what about people saying? It's a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind that of vibe. Love, yeah. That PTSD vibe. Relax, smooth. And you were driving. <laughs> so Looking for some vibes? How I about, hate that. How about that time your friend overdosed? <laughs> <laughs> what is this podcast you're making? Sp- sponsored by Simba Mattresses. <laughs> it's the mattress he would have wanted to die on. <laughs> So his question, George Barker, was uh, what sort of vibe 
is each member of regular features? What is what is the perfect number of vibes? Mm. Can two vibes end in superposition to create an ultra vibe? And what vibe cancelling headphones do you recommend? I didn't get around to all those questions because the just past Luton, times are tootin'. Got to get into the King's Cross and Pancras and start, I don't know, using my little oyster Spoon. card to get around town. It's also it's confusing uh, quantum theory with more basic Newtonian electromagnetism and waves. If uh, if two vibes overlap, I think they form constructive waves rather than anything anything quantum and supervis- superposition happening. That very much... Oh, my God. I'm it's so himself. hard for you now, Steve. <laughs> He's embarrassed himself there. <laughs> Let's see if he can, I, see if he can I, pull himself back from that one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I didn't answer many of his questions, but the first one, what sort of vibe is each member of regular features? I thought I'd answer. I, I don't even know. What, I, I don't use vibe enough, even though I used it a bit earlier in the mm. podcast. So I don't know. I wouldn't it's, even know how like, to go about this. It's shorthand for mood, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I, what's the vibe? What okay. I used... Well, oh, I anxious. It's the the vibe's pretty like, anxious right now. Right. Okay. What voice are you on a keyboard? That's what I used it to mean as, because vibraphone was on my first keyboard I ever mm. have. So I, I just think, basically, I answered it in terms of what... The vibrations. What are you on a synthesizer? What voice are you? If I'm going to scroll through the thousands of voices on a synthesizer, what are you? And uh, my vibe is the squelchy synth vibe. The wet, squelchy synth vibe that makes you laugh when you hear it because it's basically a shart. But when you laugh, you can't explain to anyone else why you find it funny without revealing to themselves that... But you can't explain to anyone else why you find that funny without revealing to them and yourself that you're just a fucking idiot who deserves far less than you actually have, however much that is. Meanwhile, Steve is a crow with a saxophone. He's smooth, sexy, and clever enough to work a lever with his beak. Gav. He's so happy about that. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, Gav, my boy, you are every single sample that's ever been made of someone going, oh yeah. You're from that yellow song where they go, oh yeah. You're the, oh yeah, from Run DMC's Here We Go, live at the Fun House. I love that one. You're the two hit, ah, yeah, that's been used on loads of Stock Aiken and Walkman songs and also on loads of keyboards. The, the, and beyond that, you're the, ooh, yeah, this is wonderful. That I think it's Nanette Newman says, as the robot housewife in the Stepford Wives. Uh, that's a spoiler, by the way. <laughs> um, but um, and that's also sampled at the beginning of S Express's S Express's Hey Music Lover, and oh, beyond I know that, that one. Ooh, yeah, yeah, this is wonderful. Nanette Newman, I think, Robot Housewife. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> You're also the no. That's good. After the beginning of that, oh, that's bad, and that's from the oh, that's. <laughs> I need to do this one better because it needs delivery. You're also the, no, that's good. After the, oh, that's bad. From, oh, that's good, no, that's bad by Sham the Sam and the Pharaohs, which was sampled in theme from S-Express. Basically, Gav, to me, the vibe that you are is S-Express, built for the 2020s and ready to ride us into the apocalypse. That, That is your vibe. And I can't, um, I can't say any more than that, really. I love it. I, that's perfect. <laughs> Ooh, squirty, squirty. You squirty, birty. Ooh, squirty, squirty. You dirty, birty. Ooh, well done, Log. Thanks for those features, mate. <laughs> I thought that went very well. Um, and if you thought that went very well as well, do you know what you can do? Go to www.patreon.com forward slash regular features 
and give us some money because your money helps us to be able to make this podcast. It helps keep us in train tickets for log. It helps mm. keep us in rent for the people who have to do the hosting. And it usually keeps us in booze. Although, as I said, I've been making up my way through a never ending yeah. supply of whiskey. So today we didn't use your money on booze. It's mostly on logs, train tickets, and maybe that weird bottle of wine that he bought. Yeah. And um, I always say microphones. Yeah. I had to spend money on microphone. I th- like and like now I've got now I own a microphone. Yeah. That's that's I yeah, it's not for my own good. No. I'm not recording my bloody memoirs into that shit. Let me tell you about yeah, And I, 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 I if people um own it to the sort of the techie side of podcasting. Actually I'd <laughs> I, I, the, You've got nowhere to go I, with this. I've got nowhere to go <laughs> because I use a Blue Yeti microphone. That I bought off. Uh, the... I'm speaking into objects that I don't <laughs> recognize. And sometimes we do it at a studio where we're not supposed to be there. <laughs> and I don't know what microphones they use either. And I think the quality of the cable has something to do with it. And sometimes get a gold they one, have so. little fishing nets over the top. And I don't know what that means either. <laughs> Sometimes Joe shouts at me for saying the P's too loud. <laughs> so that's the tech side of uh, regular yeah. features. For the old Wrapped techies, for the old techies. I'd like to shout out the human side of it. And the human oh. side, of course, are the people who support us. Not only the people who suggest features for us to do, yes, but people who give us their hard-earned cash. Wow. Put their money where their mouth is, not just their tweets. Ulrich Donner. Very good name. Hugh Jenkins. Oh. Garden Gnome. What? Mike McDonald. Huh. Luke Breakwell. The Cherry Breakwell. And another podcast called Making Games is Fun. What? They've chipped in. Why? They but, should be supporting themselves. Well, no, they, they are supporting themselves through their incredible content and also supporting us as mutuals. Wait, what are they? In the video are games world. Are they a podcast? World. That's all we need. Another shark in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> I know that podcast. It's Gary Dutton's podcast. Yeah. Uh, And he goes around and he speaks to people who make video games. It's always going around. You can't sit still, that boy. (laughs) Well, you think he's got problems. Hemorrhoids. His ass. (laughs) (laughs) If you'd like to listen to a games podcast produced by someone who has hemorrhoids, please go listen to Making Games is Fun. Is it like a Patreon sort of, uh, I don't know, a sort of custom for other Patreon pages to support other creators? Yes. Fuck. It is, it is a, um, it's fee free. I think you can fee free um, patron other patrons. Really? Yeah. Do you want to know how many uh, other patrons we patron? It's, I mean, none. It's none, yeah. Because <laughs> we're not mugs. <laughs> We've got to split it five ways as it is. Without giving us some fucking games podcast, there's enough of them. Yeah, thanks uh, for your help, Gary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you like this and you don't want to give us anything, that's fine. Tell yeah. your friends or just come back next week because yeah. we'll be right here. We'll be waiting for you. Log will be back. Maybe. Maybe someone else. Who knows? We just never know. We, we're riding by the seat of our pants. Like, we're live. We're reacting to the ever-changing... Yeah, current. yeah. yeah. We're good, we're good. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Yeah, I want to go home. Bye. <laughs>
thing. That's like, have you ever um, like torrented? <laughs> have you ever torrented a film? That's <laughs> 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 good. I'm, I'm turn it off. <laughs>